Hello, everyone. I'm excited that you all have been able to join us today. I uh, just want to take a couple of moments, make sure everybody has an opportunity to join us. But while we're waiting, if anyone would like to, if you just want to let me know that you can hear my voice and see the title slide, if you can respond in the Q&A section and just let me know that everybody can hear and that you can see everything, that would really help me out. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Henry. Jay, I'm glad you're here. Elizabeth, wonderful. Tammy, I appreciate it. I'm excited you guys are here. Hi, Pam. Okay, wonderful. Stephen and Stephanie, another Tammy. Thank you so much. This is great. All right. I'm excited to have you all here. We have just about two more minutes uh, before we officially get started, but I'll take a, a moment just to mention that the webinar is going to be recorded and also we're going to provide in an email the slide deck of the webinar and that recording. So for all of you who have registered and you've registered because you're here, uh, you'll be receiving that in a few days, but we also have all of the webinars for Giving Tuesday past webinars are up on the training webinars tab within the Giving Tuesday page. So you can always check those out or if someone else says, hey, where do I find that? You can direct them there. The slide decks aren't there, but the webinars are. Uh, and certainly any questions that you all have, you know, going forward tomorrow, that kind of thing, feel free to reach out to our customer support and we're happy to either direct you somewhere if you're looking for something like logos or something like that, we can send you where you need to go. Or if you have other specific questions, we can help you out with those also with some email dialogue. So we are wanting to just do everything we can for you to feel comfortable and ready to go for Giving Tuesday, because it'll be here before we know it. All right, so we'll give it just another, another minute or so, and then we'll get started. And along those lines, just a last quick little plug. If you haven't registered yet for Giving Tuesday, I know that it's only the end of August, but it's also the end of August. And all of a sudden, it'll be the middle of October. Uh, so things start to get busy. So go ahead and head over to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Go ahead and register there. All of those resources are gonna be available to you, whether you're registered or not. But if you're registered, you know, that's one more thing off your plate. And additionally, any upcoming webinar, I would suggest go ahead and register for those. And then that way, if it slips your mind, something like that, you'll still be emailed with the recording of the webinar and the, the slide deck for the webinar. So we're right at two o'clock. We'll give it just a moment. Um, we'll get started at about 2.01 just to kind of gather up anyone who's just checking in. And again, thank you also for those of you who were, who jumped on and let me know that you could hear everything. I appreciate that. It makes a big difference when you're getting started. So, um, and as we get started, I just wanna thank everyone again for joining me today as we talk about how to tell your nonprofit story for Giving Tuesday. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm excited that you're here. Giving Tuesday is gonna be here before we all know it. My name is Ashley Kefalitis. I'm the community development specialist here at Mighty Cause. And I'm excited to share with you what I've learned about storytelling, but also uh, just some different tips and tricks along the way. And today, what we're gonna look at is what's in a story how we prepare, how we compose, and how we, how we prepare to publish your stories. And then we'll do a little recap and we'll definitely have some time for question and answer. If you do have questions throughout the presentation, go ahead and enter those in the Q&A box. And then we'll be sure to take a look at those at the end of the um, presentation. And 
As I mentioned before, the presentation is gonna be recorded and we'll email that out to everyone, but certainly any questions we're happy to answer today. So let's start with what is in a story? So Giving Tuesday isn't just about donations. As a nonprofit organization, your goal is to inspire your community to invest in your cause. And storytelling is the foundation of creating long-term supporters of your mission. And supporters, they donate, but they also volunteer, they spread the word, and they champion your work. And Giving Tuesday is the perfect time to gather new supporters, but also to engage your faithful supporters. So storytelling for Giving Tuesday plays a unique role in your organization's overall communications plan. And you'll have a limited time drive, or excuse me, a limited time to drive your donors to your campaigns in order to reach your funding goals. And this includes end of year goals as well. So your storytelling needs to be current, impactful, and well-planned. And nonprofit storytelling for Giving Tuesday is gonna have three phases. We're gonna prepare, compose, and prepare to publish. So let's start to prepare. During your preparation, you'll make decisions about related factors and then bring them together to form a cohesive story. So these factors are your angle, your mission, your key messages, how you're gonna tell your story, and the characters of your story. First, we'll take a look at that angle. So to determine your angle, we can't talk about everything, but we have to talk about something. And if Giving Tuesday is that limited time campaign, you have to be laser focused about what you're going to ask of your donors. So your angles might be, or excuse me, they must be simple to communicate, easy to understand, allow for visual storytelling, tied to your nonprofit's mission, and broad enough that you can tie in multiple related stories, such as testimonials. And then a few examples of an angle could be, does your organization have an immediate need? Or are you rolling out a new initiative in the new year? Or perhaps you have a longstanding program that relies on Giving Tuesday for its funding. So next, we're gonna consider your mission. What is your organization all about? Your mission is bigger than your angle. So think about your organization's mission statement and other key messaging. Your nonprofit's mission presents the ideas at the core of your nonprofit's work. And these ideas are bedrock principles. And so they're the simple ideas that explain why you do the work you do. And ultimately, as a nonprofit, you're not just asking your community to support your programs and services. You're really asking them to buy into your ideas and principles that fuel those programs. And once you know your mission, you're gonna break it down. So break down your overall mission into two to three key messages. And these should be broad and speak to your why rather than your what. For example, let's say your nonprofit is a food bank. Two solid key messages would be, we believe that all people should be free from hunger. And communities need to work together to serve others who need a helping hand. So even though you may be tempted to pick out how many people your food bank feeds every year as a key message, that's a what, it's not a why. So instead of discussing what your food bank does to address hunger in your community, you're gonna highlight why. And for this, it can be helpful to refer to your nonprofit's mission statement if you're not too sure where to begin, but also keep in mind that these key messages should be approved by leadership at your organization. So definitely take a minute to get their input and review with them before charging too far forward. And now that you have your angle and your messages, you're gonna combine them. You're gonna zero in on two to three Giving Tuesday messages in light of your angle. So as we mentioned, Giving Tuesday is a limited time laser focused campaign. And we need two to three key messages that highlight the mission of your organization, but focus on the angle. So things to define in your Giving Tuesday messages could include the impact of supporters coming together to support your cause on Giving Tuesday, 
It could be a specific program or new initiative, a suggested donation amount that's specific to an immediate need, and of course, any messaging closely related to your campaign's angle. And you'll wanna keep your messaging broad, but focused. So the key messages will be promoted a number of times leading up to and on Giving Tuesday. So the messages should be broad enough to weave into your various promotional outlets. For example, you'll be sending multiple emails and making multiple social media posts. So a broad key message can be used multiple times across multiple outlets. And continuing with our food bank example, some Giving Tuesday messages might be, today we come together to work toward ending food instability in our community. It's highlighting the angle and it's noting that it's today, it's Giving Tuesday. A gift of just $25 can feed a family of three for a week. It's specific without being too specific. And our community has a responsibility to help those among us suffering from hunger. So these are just some good general solid examples. And now that you've created, and now that you've brought all these together, you've created a nonprofit storytelling funnel. So your organization's angle, mission, and key messages, they're all gonna funnel into content. And it isn't that you're choosing one over the other, because your mission matters, your messages are what get your mission done, and your angle presents your messages to your community. So it's all important and it all funnels into content. So Giving Tuesday is a special campaign to focus on joining together behind your messages to make a difference. And this means your key messages should be at the center of all of your storytelling. So when you're choosing which stories to tell, when you're picking testimonials, when you're scripting and editing videos, or when you're drafting an email, your key messages should be the foundation of each of these. And these messages will act as a guide when you're building your content. So when you and your team go through this process, many times organizations find that the messages often result in the content more or less writing itself, because now you have that big picture and you're just finding the nuances. Once you have your angle, your mission, your messages, how are you gonna tell your story? So are you gonna use video, social media posts, emails, all of the above? Each organization is different, so you'll want to see which mediums resonate with your community and consider your marketing resources. We don't want everybody to look the same, and it's not beneficial to do what other organizations are doing if it doesn't resonate with your community and your supporters. So think about outreach that has worked for you in the past. If something hasn't worked, try something new. If something worked well, see how you can make it better. See how you can improve upon it. And a few suggestions of this, photos, emails, blog posts, social media share graphics. These are those eye-catching pictures or logos with a quote or a call to action that are posted on Facebook or Instagram, what have you. And then of course, videos. And I'm not gonna go in, into all of the nuances and you'll see some of these details in your, when you receive your email, but there's, so much out there for the do-it-yourself, or if you just need a little bit of help getting started, there are a lot of free materials online, and it's just a matter of finding them and then putting in a little bit of effort to make it work for you. So every story also needs great characters. And in nonprofit fundraising, having relatable characters is essential because they bring the issues of your work down to a personal level. And it can be hard for the everyday person to relate to hunger as an issue or animal welfare as an issue or humanitarian work as an issue. And these are big, they can be overwhelming topics. And often the public, we just put on blinders because it's hard for us to wrap our minds around. But connecting these issues to the story of a family your food bank has helped feed or an animal your shelter has found a home for, or a refugee in crisis that your organization has helped to safety. These are stories the average person can connect to emotionally. So for example, 
If your organization is working to, worry, to raise awareness and funds for dogs and puppy mills, you can share the journey of one dog's rescue from a puppy mill to a safe place, to a loving home. And this can make a big complex issue feel personal and understandable. And the character of your story is a single puppy. And so here's a few things you'll wanna consider when you're choosing your characters. Does their story help tell your story? the story of your nonprofit? Can we easily contact them? Are they available to tell their story in their words? Or is this a unique angle that hasn't become cliche or overused by similar organizations? Because again, you wanna stand out. You're drawing attention to what makes your organization do what it does. You wanna hit those fundamental bedrock missions. After you determine the kind of characters you're looking for, reach out to anyone whose story you wish to use in your Giving Tuesday campaign. You're just asking, they have the opportunity to decline. And your reach out may be to your organization through an email, anyone who's interested in participating, or it could be specific to just a few ideal characters that you're going to directly reach out to. It's totally up to you. Again, what works best for your nonprofit? Something that all of you can do to help be prepared. Have a few initial questions to ask in case you only have one interaction with that character. Also, have an interview prepared, but be willing to deviate from the interview if the conversation content will be helpful. And definitely have waivers or permission forms readily available if you intend to use pictures, videos, or quotes, and be sure just to follow your organization's policies for this content. We don't want an oversight to become something sticky. So just that's something to be aware of. Now it's time to compose. We did a lot of work with that preparation. Now it's time to compose. So diligent preparation will absolutely make writing easier. And you just start writing. Get your initial information out of your head and onto paper or into the computer. And don't worry about proofreading as you go, just write. And as you find your flow, you'll begin to find your voice. And once that initial information is out of your head, consider your audience. Who are you writing to and how do you want them to receive your message? You'll also need to identify your channels of communication and tailor your story to suit each channel. So make a list of the different ways you'll communicate with the public about and on the day of Giving Tuesday, and then consider a strategy for each. For instance, how are you telling your story on Mighty Cause? Are you using a fundraiser page or are you using your profile page? Or your website, where on your website will you promote Giving Tuesday? And when will you announce it? When will you start promoting? Something else to consider, do you have any flyers or posters in your nonprofit's facilities? And if you do, do you have the foot traffic to make those effective? Different things to think about, and I'll say it again, everything should be for your nonprofit, what works for your community. Once your initial draft is done, now it's time to tweak. So in light of your audience and your communication method, now you need to consider, does it need to be more lighthearted? Does the story need more detail or less? Have you gone off on a tangent? Have you become too technical? Or maybe this should be two different stories. And both stories are good. Both stories fit within the key messaging, but now you have two different pieces of content that you can use for your campaign. And during the tweaking process, be sure that you're giving Tuesday messages are at the center of your stories. Avoid deleting content. Remove the phrase, the sentence, or the paragraph and paste it somewhere else. But hold on to it because you may want to reuse or revisit the information later. And you'll also find that different channels may be better suited for different parts of your stories. So be willing to adjust. Nothing needs to be set in stone. And finally, enlist the help of others when you edit. They will see things that you have read over. It's just the way that it is. You can read it 50 times and they'll still find the error, which is good 
We want them to find the error, but we need their help. And something to note on that matter, if you're a small nonprofit and you don't have multiple people to ask to read over your information or your story, that's okay. Ask a friend, ask a coworker. Sometimes somebody outside of the organization is the best to be able to give you that practical feedback. So now we're ready to publish. We might have two or three stories. We might have one main story, but now we're ready to publish. Creating those visuals is more than just putting together a picture or a video. This is the full blog post. It's the full email, signature line and all. You wanna have it all prepared, all put together. And after you've created and edited the content of your story, you wanna make sure that the text, the pictures, the videos, everything is visually appealing and works together. And that it's visually appealing for all of your outreach avenues. For example, don't just trust that your formatting will work for every social media platform. Check it and double check it. Check things on a desktop and on a mobile device because little nuances can change and it can really affect that visual presentation. Most importantly, do not neglect the final edit. What is the final edit? It's the last look before you post the story to the public and you don't wanna typo front and center. And just the reality is we all read what we think it says when we've written it and when we've read over it a hundred times. So back to asking others, enlist them to do that final proofread. You do not wanna give thanks, or excuse me, you want to give thanks to your donors. You do not wanna give thanks to your donors as an illustration. And once everything is ready to go to the public, you're gonna create a content launch calendar. It's a little wordy, but it's super important. Determine what and when to post and send. Everything doesn't need to go out at once. It shouldn't go out at once. You'll want to ration your photos and your videos based on timing. How long is your campaign? Are you gonna be promoting for a month out or two weeks out? So you wanna ration your photos based on timing but also on bonus challenges and on general audience activity. For example, don't launch your best video at 6 a.m. or at 9 p.m. because you're gonna miss the bulk of your supporters. And having your emails, your posts, newsletters, postcards, having everything ready, it's gonna make your life so much easier leading up to and on Giving Tuesday. All you want to do the day of is have to click send. And here's a little pro tip. Make sure someone else in your organization has the schedule of when to send. Just in case you need to get, delegate, crazy things happen on Giving Tuesday, and it gives you one more hand to help out. So let's recap. Preparation is key. Determine your angle, your mission, and your key messages, and then combine these to create your Giving Tuesday messages and decide how you're going to share your stories with your community, and then consider and contact your characters. And once you've prepared, just start writing. Get your thoughts out of your head. Take time to imagine your audience so that you can tailor, tailor your message to them and determine your communication channels. And then edit your story to make sure you're giving Tuesday messages are front and center. Finally, you're going to prepare to publish. Add your graphics and double check the formatting. Schedule the sending and the posting of all of your different content. And most importantly, proofread one more time. And then ask somebody else to proofread just one more time. Then you can sit back. Then you can take a breath. And you can enjoy what you've created and you can go confidently knowing that you've presented the best of your organization to your community. One quick thing that you wanna make sure that you've done before you start writing, before you've done any of the preparation, make sure you're registered for Giving Tuesday, make sure that your organization as a whole knows that you're gonna be participating in Giving Tuesday so that everybody can start getting their mindset in that direction and then when you start asking for input, 
start asking for help, everybody's on board, everybody's excited to share. I know that was a lot of information. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna open it up for questions. Go ahead and list any questions that you have in the question and answer box. We'll answer as many of those as we can. And also keep in mind that we have the, um, our support center if you ever have questions after today. So I'm gonna be quiet just for a moment while I do a little quick reading. Yes, so Connie made a comment. It's not a question, but I think it's a great comment. And Connie has found that giving the story to someone unfamiliar with the organization really helps Connie to see if she's getting her message across, which is a wonderful thing. And it's one more person that you're reminding, hey, Giving Tuesday is coming. Some of the biggest mistakes that people make, Henry asked, the a big thing is waiting till the last minute, although even if you've waited till the last minute, still go ahead and do it. Typically what happens with waiting till the last minute, after the fact, you've realized all the things you could have done or would have said differently or would have added. The other, one of the other biggest mistakes is thinking that people don't want to contribute. So thinking that someone's not gonna wanna do an interview or they're not gonna want to allow for a quote. It's just not, it's just not true. People want to help but it's easy to overlook that. And we don't want to burden anybody. You can use different words there. So I think the two biggest mistakes are waiting till the last minute and not asking other people for input. Actually, the third would be being too long-winded as I'm about to be right now. We only have a short time when it comes to what people will read. So going off on tangents can be a, a major mistake. So concise is better. The, and Henry also asked, why is the mission more important than the vision? And the missions, the mission is the biggest piece of what and why you do what you do. So everything needs to fit within your mission. Your angle needs to fit within your mission. The key messages are come from your mission. So that's because, and also your mission is what your organization has agreed upon. You don't want to deviate from that. So you want to make sure everything that you're doing lines up within your vision. Yes, so Kim, this will be sent out. I'm so glad that this was amazing. We will send out the webinar and the slide deck via email to everyone who's registered. And we're also gonna post in the training webinars tab of the Giving Tuesday website. We're gonna post that, the, this webinar. It'll take a couple of days, but it'll be in there as well. So Amy asked, is there a suggested timeline to start your messaging in advance of Giving Tuesday? A month to six weeks, and that depends on kind of how you do your messaging with your community. So if you, let's say that you do a newsletter once a month, we would say post it two months in advance so that they know. If you send out weekly emails, six weeks in advance is a good amount of time. I should actually say six weeks to two months. So it depends on how often you communicate with your donors and in what fashion. The other thing is with Giving Tuesday when it comes to uh, social media posts in, in that manner, you're gonna wanna start to do that early on. I'm gonna say again, six weeks to two months, but you don't, you're not inundating them. You're maybe the first two weeks you're putting a post or two. And then as you get closer to it and you're four weeks out, your messaging gets more encompassed with Giving Tuesday. Your stories become more specific or a little bit longer than at first you're just mentioning it. And now you're really pushing them towards Giving Tuesday. We also have early giving. So that's something that you might want to um, play into your, into your marketing that way. And I'm going to read Daniel's question real quickly here. Okay. So Daniel asked about, and a lot of people run into this. He just, he's a good enough writer on his own, but just doesn't have time to put all of this together. He asked if there are sources for volunteer PR services. I'm sure they're out there. Uh, we don't recommend any. We don't uh, 
I recommend any is the best way to put that. What I would suggest is touch base with different, either, whether it's staff or board members or volunteers within your charity. And particularly because you're on that national level, check to see either if there's different chapters, if they wanna do kind of their own and they can each create somewhat of their own story or check with different staff and volunteers because I'm sure there's some other good writers in the mix. They just don't realize that you need someone to do some, some story marketing for lack of a better term. So I would start within your charity and that also lets you know that the person writing really gets it. They really get your mission. They really get what you're all about. So Allison asked, okay, this one's delicate. She, she, Allison asked, how do you create a story for an organization that serves people who have experienced trauma? I am, I'm, have little experience in that realm, but what I would suggest is in some ways, you, you, it's not that you want to be vague, but you do want to be not too personal. So, um, part of what you can do is a, certainly avoiding names and things like that. And anyone who is, I'm, and I don't even know if this is right. And do please forgive me if I'm not wording it properly. If there's anyone that you've been able to serve who is far enough through their journey that they're willing to say, I wouldn't mind speaking about this, then they would be a great place to start. And they can be as topical or get in as much detail as they would like. However, the more detail you go into, the more difficult that can be for your readers. So you want to kind of find a balance. And I think a great opportunity there is to say, as what was mentioned earlier by Connie, have someone who is very familiar with what you do. Maybe they're not the person who's been living through trauma, but someone else to say, how does this sound to you? And, and I don't, I hope that that's helpful, Allison. There's, it's tricky, but it can be done. Usually the best way to go about it is by those who have been served by you and they are far enough through in their journey that they are able to offer insight. I hope that was helpful. And we do have someone, yep, so the um, recording can be accessed after. We're gonna send it in an email and in a few days, it'll be up on the Giving Tuesday website. All right, Tammy, let me see real quickly. Okay, so this is a great question. Is it helpful to be on multiple platforms for Giving Tuesday? My, most platforms will tell you not really. And here's the reason. Most platforms, there is an aim towards prizes. Some are going to be cash prizes. Some, like us, we do cash prizes. We do subscription prizes. As you get involved with multiple platforms, now you're sending your donors in different places so that the funds are not centralized. So now if you are trying to win a, a cash prize with Mighty Cause, but you've had $1,500 go to a different platform, then that's going to make it your $1,500 behind kind of thing on Mighty Cause. The other thing is that can become confusing for donors. And when donors get confused, then they just don't donate, which is something we really want to avoid. We want as many donations as possible. So if you can keep donors headed to the same place, that's best. And the best thing to do there is to look to see what platform provides the best of what you need which one provides the best customer service. It's not always about who gives the biggest, highest prizes, but who gives the best customer service. Is this something that I can use through the end of the year? That kind of thing is something to look at when you do the different platforms, but great question. So Linda, the video, the video and photo releases, we don't provide those because they do become legal documents to a degree. So that you'll want to speak with whether your um, nonprofit has legal representation or if your nonprofit already has something put together, those video and photo releases, 
they're important. Uh, and it also just depends on every nonprofit. They have their different regulations, I'll say, when it comes to posting videos and, and photos and or quotes. Uh, some it's a big thing, others quotes aren't so big. So uh, that'll be something maybe check with, um, check with your organization about. And I have another, let me see here. Okay, so one of the things, so this question is there's, it's a small organization and it's hard to compete with the big dogs. So, and how do you stand out in the crowd? And that's something that um, in the nonprofit world is, is such a difficult balance. When it comes to on the mighty for mighty cause giving Tuesday, we do have we qualify our organization's leaderboards anyway as a small nonprofit and a large nonprofit. So that's one thing that's super helpful is just then you're you're working with the small ones when it comes to prizes and things. But in being within your community and working to help you stand out from the crowd, a couple of things with that, and this is going to be in your storytelling, but also in your, how you get your stories out there is connecting with your community. It does end up being in some ways, a lot of boots on the ground, but in anyone who has been served uh, through your free music education um, and anything with the toy and the food drives, those people that you connect with as much as you're able, ask them to promote you. So doing that of making those phone calls to people and saying, hey, and this might not sound appealing, but making the phone call to say, hey, will you, do you mind posting on Facebook? Giving Tuesday's coming. It's a major part of our funding. Do you mind liking us on Facebook? Would you mind making a couple of posts on your Instagram account? Would you mind tweeting of the services that we've offered or the fun that we've had? Um, you can, that specific ask, and what that does, the more you can get other people who have been touched by your organization talking about it, that's going to help get awareness. So a lot of times it's that you have to build that awareness first, which I'm sure you know, um, but it, it can be a struggle. The other thing is as much as people do things online, get flyers into the local stores, get flyers into the into the community that way. See if, hey, we'll give you a shout out on, you'll say to the hardware store, we'll give you a shout out on our Facebook if you'll post our Giving Tuesday link on your website. So it's, it's gonna be a lot of marketing within the community. I hope that was helpful. Okay, so when I say to ration videos or photos, does it mean you can't recycle? Absolutely recycle and replay videos. Absolutely. Here's a couple of reasons for replaying and recycling. Chances of someone seeing every one of your posts is slim. So in some ways you want to repost things because you, you want to make sure that people are seeing it. So you do want to be reposting, whether it's a video or a picture or a, a quote, something like that. Definitely you want to do that. But what you don't want to do, let's say that you only have four videos and leading up to Giving Tuesday, you've already played all of them six times. That's not so good. Or if you have videos or excuse me, photos of something, you want to make sure that you're spreading out the way you do it so that it's not the same young girl on a swing set three times in a row you want to make sure you have the young girl on the swing set and then the little boy on the slide and then another little girl who's near the pond. And so you want to change it up. So that's with the rationing, just kind of um, take a look at the order that you're doing things, but definitely recycle and replay things. And then when you get into the spring, use some of your Giving Tuesday stuff. The quotes at that point are what, six months old at most? And the work that you've done has still been just as impactful. So by all means, save everything and absolutely recycle and replay things. Great question. 
So Mike is asking how far in advance do we recommend creating the content calendar? And then at what frequency? And this goes back to that, um, you'll want the calendar to kind of begin six weeks to two months, but that also depends on the type of outreach that you're doing. And also with the frequency, same thing. If your donors are used to only getting one mailed newsletter a month, what you might do is say, well, we're gonna throw in a postcard. So now we're gonna do a mailed newsletter. Two weeks later, we're gonna do a postcard. Two weeks later is the mailed newsletter. Two weeks later, the postcard. So you can, it's, it really depends on your community. In a lot of ways, frequency is, the, is super important because repetition is what sticks in our minds. So when you're two months out, even if you start doing something every week to 10 days, just mentioning it is pretty good. Now, when you get to a month out, you definitely want Giving Tuesday to be mentioned definitely once a week, if not twice a week. And when you're two weeks out, now you want it mentioned about three times a week. And that isn't always in the same thing. That doesn't necessarily mean three emails in a week. It could mean there's an email, three social media posts, or there's two emails and a flyer. So it's, I hope that that's helpful. So much of it depends on your community and the method of communication, but I would say start two months out and then increase that frequency as you get closer to Giving Tuesday. The week before Giving Tuesday, multiple things every day, especially if you're using social media, multiple posts every day. You're not gonna send multiple flyers, but you could, I would say an email every day, multiple Facebook posts. And if you do any live activity, let's say that you're a PTA, have somebody announcing it every day during lunch at elementary school, if that's the type of, of circumstance that you're in. Oh, okay, so Felix. Felix is new to his position and he's interested in registering. So there's a couple of things you're gonna do. The first thing to get started, and everybody should do this, head over to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and you can register there. There's a, a register button. And when you start that, that will start to steamroll the process for everything, claiming your organization, getting your account, the whole deal. So start there, givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Fantastic question, Felix. You know what? Yeah, I guess I could just post that link. Give me just a moment and I will post that link in the um, in the question and answer section. Let's see. And okay, I will not use your name. Okay, so if your nonprofit is so new and you and you're trying to gain th those donors, part of what your story is going to be about is and I seem somewhat obvious of who you are, but you're gonna have a little bit about how you got founded and why you are kind of stepping onto the field right now, who you are, what you're doing in the community. So your story is gonna be a little bit more of an introduction story. And then the, the reaching out is, because you're not necessarily going to have the email lists, a lot of it through social media as you're comfortable, but a lot of it is going to be that in-person, I'll use the hardware store again, or the bakery at the street, putting your name out there with different established organizations, whether it's a, a business or a school, something like that, and seeing what you can do to get onto their websites or to get their your flyers into their hands so that they in essence, are promoting you. They're not doing a lot to promote you. They're just, you know, putting up your flyer, putting you on their website, but then you're, you're getting your name out there. So, girl, excuse me, early giving is going to start, and I believe it's the 15th. And so when somebody asks you the question and makes you nervous, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be November 15th. I will, I am checking that right now and that it just starts. So Mike, you don't have to 
implement Giving Tuesday, it's just, or excuse me, early giving, it's just gonna, it's just gonna start for you. Um, and what that means for those who are new with early giving, that's building up that momentum and building up sort of the inertia of Giving Tuesday. So people can donate leading up to, and it still counts for certain prizes. It still counts for leaderboards, things like that. Uh, we do have some power hours that are for specific hours within the day, but that early giving is the opportunity to sort of, uh, let me just make the donation before I forget, or let me help build some of that steam. So when early giving comes, we're already halfway to our goal that kind of thing. And Mike, I just double checked. It is going to start on Tuesday, November 15th and your donate button will become active. So that's where that will start. Um, I hope that's helpful. Uh, Allison, good. I'm glad that was helpful. Okay. And I think Kim, or excuse me, Allison, I hope you saw Kim's message. Women, um, voices for women counselor could help. Um, Tammy, good. I'm glad you found that helpful. Great, Felix, I'm glad you found the login information. Okay, um, what we'll do is, Felix, go ahead and email our customer support. You can email them at support at mightycause.com, so support at mightycause.com, and they can definitely get you taken care of that way. Okay, so another brand new nonprofit. Okay, so I'm gonna provide that Giving Tuesday link. I think that's going to be the most helpful. Give me just a moment and I'm going to get that posted in the Q&A section. Let's see, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type the answer. One moment. Okay, so it's just givingtuesday.mightycause.com. So that's going to provide there's a register, a register now button. And as soon as you do register now, it'll take you uh, everywhere you need to go that way. Okay. okay, and if you already have a campaign that's going on Mighty Cause, so right now there's actually a giving event called San Diego Gives. Uh, and so there's for um, Eric, I'm gonna suggest go ahead and it has to do with the brand that you're on and it's not stuff that we're, I'm gonna try to go into because I think I'm just gonna confuse everybody, but go ahead and uh, submit an email to support at mightycause.com and they'll be able to, to help you out with that. Okay, and John has a question. Go ahead and if John, if you can, go ahead and list it in the question and answers or if you wanna send that over to support at mightycause.com, that would be great. Okay, so this is a great question. Can you change your direction? Can you change um, the direction of your nonprofit if you've already established your program? You can, you just wanna make sure it's very clear that you're making a change and you wanna roll out that change. You wanna make sure everybody gets plenty of notice, plenty of notice as you start to change that direction. Um, so if it's within your storytelling, Part of what's great with that is being able to say, this is what we've done in the past and here's why we're moving to a new, a new direction or here are just some of the changes, whatever those changes happen to be. So the storytelling is great because you have a chance to explain what you've done and why, but it, you also have that opportunity to say, here's what we're looking forward to in the future. And Lindsay, yes, you absolutely can, will be sent a recording of the webinar. Emails will go out to anyone who's registered. And in the email, you'll receive a recording, but also the slide deck for the webinar. And also for anyone, whether it's just in your um, organization or if another organization that you're chatting with says, oh, I don't know, I missed it. You can direct them to are just the, that overall givingtuesday.mightycause.com and have them look at the resources and the training webinars. All of our 2022 training webinars will be posted there. It takes a few days, 
but all of them will be posted there. So you can go back to look at what, what has already been broadcast, but also register for what's upcoming. Okay, so that, yeah, so the video, um, go ahead and um, if you can't see the video right at this second, just kind of hang tight and you will receive that uh, in an email. Oh, Elaine, you're so welcome. I appreciate that very much. Yes, okay, so this is a great question. Uh, Monique asked, are we able to access any graphics specific to Giving Tuesday that have already been created? And you can. You're also going to find those on your on the Giving Tuesday page underneath the resources. So you'll be able to find those there. We have multiple Giving Tuesday logos that you are welcome to use in your different marketing. That would be great. And that's also another thing. As you chat with other organizations, let them know, hey, did you know there's a resource tab? Go ahead and get logos. We also have, when it comes to some of that marketing emails and things like that, Facebook posts, we have some templates that you can use that just sort of help give you a little bit of a um, little bit of verbiage that you can launch off from when it comes to some of that promotion. Great question, Monique. Thank you. I'll give it just another moment here. We'll see if we have any questions. And again, one of the best things is that the webinar will be distributed. And also, as you're just sort of going through the different Giving Tuesday items on the main Giving Tuesday page, this is a good time for you to, to do a little bit of trial and error. Yeah. Go to your page, paste some different things in, put in some different videos or some different pictures, see how it looks. You're not in a time crunch right now. So take this opportunity to, you know, trial and error a few things, see what works best on your Mighty Cause page. If you're interested in creating any peer-to-peer -peer pages, you can go in, you can do some practice with those. So while we're still a few months out, this is a great time to do some trial and error with your, your Mighty Cause pages as well. I'm gonna give it just another moment in case anybody has any other questions. Oh, Felix, absolutely. This has been a pleasure. I, I, I enjoy getting to interact with you all and, and hear your questions. So I appreciate you interacting in response. Give it just a few more moments. And I'm gonna give just a few uh, links again, one more time uh, in case you didn't get to write them down before. Our customer support, please reach out anytime and you can reach us at support at mightycause.com, support at mightycause.com, and givingtuesday.mightycause.com is where you can go for registration. It's also where you can look up any of the logos. We have past webinars, and we have a lot of other helpful resources. We have FAQs, all kinds of stuff. So you can find those at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Dot com. And I don't see any other questions coming in. Thank you again for joining everybody. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I know time is super valuable.